Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to speak to you this afternoon. So today I'm going to be talking to you about the impact of bone metastases and bisphosphonate therapy and RCC. And no disclosures. Let's see, is there another way to... All right, bone metastases are frequently present in patients with metastatic renal cell carcinoma. They cause significant skeletal morbidity with rates of uh, SREs of upwards to 74% during the cytokine area. Osteoclast-targeted agents are currently used to prevent skeletal-related complications in patients with bone metastases from solid tumors. And the objectives of this study was to characterize and evaluate the impact of bone metastases and bisphosphonate therapy in patients with metastatic RCC. So we conducted a pooled retrospective analysis of 2,749 patients with metastatic RCC treated on phase two and phase three trials sponsored by Pfizer between 2003 and 2011. We evaluated overall survival and progression-free survival in various subsets of patients. So we looked at patients with and without bone metastases. We looked at patients in bone, with bone metastases, whether they were treated with bisphosphonate or not. And then we conducted a subset analysis in patients with bone metastases by risk group and also by type of therapy. Overall survival and progression-free survival were analyzed using the Kaplan-Meier method, and Cox regression model was used in multivariable analysis. So these are the baseline characteristics of the patients. Um, in total, there was 28% of the patients had bone metastases. As you can see, um, the majority of pa the patients were actually well matched in regards to age, sex, um, ECOG performance status, and pathology. The majority of patients were less than 65 years of age, were male, had excellent performance status, and had clear cell histology. In regards to baseline site of metastases, as I already stated, 28% of the patients had bone metastases. The most frequently involved site of metastases was the lung with rates of involvement of 77%. Um, the liver was involved in 30% of the cohort with um, an equal distribution between patients with bone metastases and those without bone metastases. Other um, metastases were defined as those, as basically excluding bone, lung, and liver to include lymph nodes, soft tissue, adrenal, et cetera. The majority of patients had previous nephrectomy, and in regards to IMDC risk group, there were more patients with poor risk disease in the bone metastases group um, as compared to those without bone metastases. With regard to type of therapy, 64% of patients received therapy with a VEGF inhibitor, 38% received treatment with sunitinib, 13 received treatment with serafinib, 13 with excitinib, 16% received treatment with an mTOR inhibitor, of which 8% had received treatment with temsorolimus, and 8% received treatment with temsorolimus plus interferon, and 20% of patients received treatment with interferon alone. With regard to bisphosphonate therapy, 10% of patients in our cohorts received treatment with a bisphosphonate, the majority of which received zolandronic acid. Um, there was three patients who actually received sequential therapy with more than one agent, and there was no patient who received treatment with denosumab, which was approved one year um, before the close of our analysis. And of patients with bone metastases, 21% received a bisphosphonate. With regard to adverse events, as you can see, patients with that were treated with bisphosphonates actually had a higher in incidence of hypocalcemia, renal insufficiency, and osteonecrosis of the jaw compared to those who did not receive treatment with a bisphosphonate agent. Um, and this was statistically significant for the grouped analyses. For patients with osteonecrosis of the jaw, there were seven patients who received or developed osteonecrosis of the jaw. All of these patients were treated with sunitinib. Six of them had bone metastases. And with regard to SREs, of the 781 patients with bone metastases, only 6% or 50 patients actually had an SRE, which was defined as a pathologic fracture, cord compression, radiotherapy to the bone, or surgery to the bone. And the rate of SREs in patients with bone metastases was actually similar in patients who received a bisphosphonate or did not receive a bisphosphonate. And the majority of skeletal-related events were actually skeletal fractures. The presence of bone metastases was actually associated with a shorter um, progression-free survival and overall survival compared to patients who um, did not have bone metastases. And you can see that this is statistically significant for um, PFS and for OS. The PFS was 5.06 months for patients 
with bone metastases compared to um, 6.73 months for patients without bone metastases. And for overall survival, um, overall survival for patients with bone metastases was 13.17 months and 20.2 months for patients without bone metastases. And when we actually stratify patients by IMDC risk group, this trend actually held up for each of the risk categories. So for patients with good risk disease and intermediate risk disease, um, this was statistically significant and most pronounced for patients with good, good risk and intermediate risk disease. However, the poorest patients, the, the, um, this was not statistically significant, though the trend was still there. We actually did uh, the same analysis based on MSKCC risk group and also based on type of therapy, taking targeted therapy patients and those with, that were treated with interferon alone and actually observed this very same trend. With regard to bisphosphonate therapy, what we see here is that bisphosphonate therapy actually did not impact progression-free survival or overall survival. Progression-free survival was 5.12 months for patients um, on a bisphosphonate agent versus 4.93 months, and overall survival was 13.3 four months for patients with a bisphosphonate, receiving a bisphosphonate agent as compared to 13.11 months, and this was not statistically significant. So in summary, the presence of bone metastases is an adverse risk factor for survival in patients with metastatic RCC, although underutilized bisphosphonate therapy did not impact the rate of SREs or survival in our cohort, and bisphosphonate therapy was actually associated with a statistically significant increase in rates of hypocalcemia, renal insufficiency, and osteonecrosis of the jaw. Thank you.